Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage, Reba Sparrow. I was sitting up in bed with my boyfriend at the time, Michael, and he had his head leaning up against my chest, and he was looking up at me with these dark doe eyes. And he had this really thick, curly hair that I like to run my fingers through. And he looked like a good 10 years younger than he was. We were in our early 30s at the time. And he says to me, I have a request. <laughs> now I know by the tone in his voice and the way that he's looking at me that this is a sexual request. <laughs> And we'd only been together at that point for about four months, but we had developed a very quick sexual trust in one another, and we'd been experimenting with each other's fantasies. So he, we were doing a lot of anal play, for instance, because he was really into that, and he bought for me a bed harness but that goes between the mattresses that would allow my wrists and my ankles to be tied up at the same time. So I was really into that. And we were doing a lot of like really violent role play to where we had to have a safety word, just kind of playing around with our fantasies. So when he said, I have a request, I was like, bring it on, what's next? And he takes a deep breath and he seems like kind of hesitant and he goes, uh, I don't know if I want to tell you this one actually, it's kind of fucked up. <laughs> And I was like, no, everybody thinks that about their own sexual desires at some point. I'm sure it's fine. This is safe. You can just tell me. And he was like, yeah, no, it's really bad. And if I tell you, I'm afraid you might break up with me. And I was like, Michael, you know, you don't have to tell me, but if you do, I am, oh, I'm such an open person. Like, you can just tell me. So... He finally looks up and he takes a deep breath and he says, okay, I want to suck on your tits and call you mommy while I get myself off. <laughs> now, being the very open person that I am, this wasn't that big of a request. <laughs> but coming from my background, he couldn't have said more terrifying words. <laughs> so let me back up about eight years prior to this moment when I found out that I was pregnant. I was ecstatic for two reasons. I was gonna be a mom and my tits were going to get bigger. So I grew up in a household with a mom and a sister who were very well endowed, and they liked to remind me on a regular basis that I was not. <laughs> my mom was constantly telling me that I had my Aunt Karen's tiny tits, and my sister was like, oh, but it's fine because you don't have any hips either, so at least you're proportionate. <laughs> yeah. And even my brother, my brother was like, oh, you're so lucky, you're never gonna have to wear a bra. Cause he, I, I had what he, he liked to call my boobs starts. And he was like, starts are perky, so you're fine. So to them, this was just like a big joke. But to me, it planted a seed like really early on that my body wasn't enough. That I wasn't feminine and therefore I wasn't attractive. And I was also born with what's called a protruding sternum. Um, if you look at me from the side, I'll show you in a moment, you can kind of see it, but not really, because I'm really good at hiding it. Um, I have a lump sort of in the middle of my chest here. And it's just, it, it like mocks my boobs. It's like, <laughs> it's like I'm this big lump in the middle of your chest, like next to these tiny little mounds, ha ha ha. So I've always had this insecurity about this area. So when I found out I was pregnant, I was like, yes! Because at some point, my milk is gonna come in, right? My boobs are gonna get bigger than my sternum and I'm gonna look like a real girl. <laughs> so at like eight and a half months, my, my milk did come in and I threw a small party for myself in the aisles of Target. <laughs> because I was able to buy a size C bra. <laughs> and about like a month and a half, well, like a month later, my son was born. 
And the first thing they taught me in the hospital was how to breastfeed. Now, it's not as simple as you might think. You think it's just like expose boobs, attach infant, go to town. <laughs> but it's more complicated than that. So they taught me to form my hand into the letter C and then cup my breast and massage with my thumb to help encourage milk flow. And they also told me to hold the baby in what they called the football pose. So his head is looking up at me and his body is like going lengthwise this way, which felt really uncomfortable. And I was like, what? Nobody told me. Like, I'm used to seeing the traditional hold the baby this way. And that's what I wanted, you know, but they were like, no, do it this way. And then <laughs> the nurse said, but before you try, because you got to teach the baby before you try, I want you to wear this nipple shield. <laughs> I'd never heard of a nipple shield before. So for those of you who don't know what that is, it's like a plastic nipple that looks similar to what you would find in a baby bottle, but it kind of suctions to your boob. And it's supposed to help the baby to nurse. And I was like, wait a minute, shouldn't the baby like instinctually know how to nurse? <sighs> Oh my God, the nurse knows my tits are inadequate. <laughs> and I felt horrible. I was like, there's something wrong with my boobs. There's something wrong with my nipples. She knows that I'm not going to be able to breastfeed this baby. And I have to tell you, I was really attached to the idea that my breasts would now have a purpose, like a function. Because before, their purpose and function was to be voluptuous and sexy and attractive, and they failed. So now they had the opportunity to redeem themselves in motherhood. And I was like, oh my God, I fail already. So I put the nipple shield on because I was young and I didn't know what else to do. And the baby started nursing. But the problem was when I got him home, he wouldn't nurse without the nipple shield. And I, re I know. I really wanted that skin on skin contact to help you know, create that bond. And it's a very special thing when you're nursing your child. And it re like I kept trying and he just <laughs> like would turn away every time. And I felt horrible. I felt like a failure as a mother. And I was like, these fucking tits have done it again. <laughs> so I started to, I was really, really stressed. And what happens when you're nursing and you get really stressed your milk flow will stop the more stressed you get. So I stopped producing as much milk. And my son, so he wasn't drinking enough, and he started to lose weight. So I went to a lactation consultant, and she basically told me that um, my milk flow was inadequate and that um, I had to stop nursing and that I had to feed him formula, and if I didn't, then he could die. So... That was one of the worst things anyone has ever said to me in my life. And I just spiraled into a really deep postpartum depression. I couldn't look at another woman breastfeeding uh, on TV even, um, in public or in her own home without having a really like horrible resentment and jealousy. Um, I even wished, no, not even wished, I like hoped that when my friends were pregnant that they would have problems breastfeeding so that I wouldn't feel that resentment towards them. So when Michael said to me, I want to suck on your tits and call you mommy while I get myself off, I was terrified, like completely terrified. I was like, there's no way this is gonna work out for you, dude. <laughs> because these tits aren't big enough to be sexy and they're not maternal enough to fulfill your fantasy. This is a complete disaster. And while all this is going on in my head, I'm silent, right? So he starts to freak out and he's like, oh my God, why are you quiet? Why aren't you saying anything? Oh my God, oh my God, I knew it, you're gonna break up with me, this is horrible, I shouldn't have said anything, he's just, he's just freaking out. And so I, because he had expressed such hesitance in telling his fantasy to me, I didn't want him to think that there was anything wrong with his fantasy, because I didn't feel like there was, so I was like, oh my God, 
I have to do this. I just have, I just have, I have to do this. And so I, he, he's like freaking out, freaking out. And I very robotically, mechanically said, hush, baby. <laughs> It's time to eat. <laughs> and I formed my hand into the letter C. <laughs> and I cupped the breast, exposed, started massaging, <laughs> attached man child. And then I was just like stiff, just like stiff as a board. <laughs> and he just, he like, he like latched on and he looked up at me and he smiled. I think he was kind of in shock that I was like going through with this. And I was kind of like cradling him very awkwardly and he was just so happy. <laughs> and that felt nice that he was happy. And he started to nibble on my nipple a little bit, and I was like, all right, but you're not gonna be satisfied, but like, do what you gotta do. And he, and he started to nibble a little bit, and he just kept smiling. And because he was smiling, like, that made me feel good, and I got like a little bit of a tingle. You know the one that like starts here and that goes down to the lady zone? <laughs> I got a little bit of that, and I was like, okay, this isn't that bad. It's not good, but it's not that bad. Um, and then he just kept going for a couple minutes, and I started to relax a little. And then he pulled away, and he switched to the other side. <laughs> and he was still, he's like playing around on the nipple and suckling and just smiling so much. And he started to stroke himself, and I was like, oh, that's actually hot. Just seeing him like take pleasure in me was hot. And then, I will never forget this, he pulls away. And he looks up and he says, mmm, mommy, <laughs> tastes like cantaloupe. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know, breast milk actually tastes like cantaloupe. Like, not just mine, but like universally, it tastes like cantaloupe, which is a super weird thing to hear while you're having sex. So, <laughs> I laughed. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I laughed, and that helped me to relax even more. And he, he laughed a little bit too, which is always good, I think. And, um, and he just kept sucking and sucking, and then he was just jerking himself off. And I started to feel really empowered. And, I, and then I felt like really sexy. And then I felt a completely hands-free orgasm. And that sent him over the edge, and he just shot his wad all over both of us. <laughs> and we both collapsed on the bed. And he looks at me and he goes, wow. And I was like, yeah, wow. <laughs> and I have to tell you, after that happened, all that resentment that I had for those women for eight years, gone. I didn't have any jealousy, any resentment for any of those women. And I'm not trying to say that if you've had a trauma, you should sexualize it and things will be great. <laughs> Maybe they will. But for me, taking something negative and deriving pleasure out of it really helped with that healing process. So now, I am the very first person to ask my partner if they'll suck on my tits. <laughs> and maybe call me mommy. <laughs> <laughs>